Magandang araw po ulit sa inyong lahat. Narito na naman tayo para sa isa pang kabanata ng kultura, sining at iba pa. At ang ating paksa ngayong araw ay ang napakahalagang sining ng pelikulang Pilipino. At uh, ang programa pong ito ay hatid nga pala sa inyo ng TVUP ng Universidad ng Pilipinas. Kasama ko ngayong araw upang kapanayamin ng ating mga uh, panauhin ay ang Batikang Makata at Kritiko na si Dr. Neil Garcia at isang bagong miyembro ng ating panel, ang uh, ating kaibigan na profesora ng Araling Sining, isa ring uh, scholar at kritiko, si Cecil De La Paz. Uh, Neil, gusto mong ipakilala ang ating mga panauhin? Yes, okay. Uh, tatlo ang ating mga guests ngayon. All of them are filmmakers. Uh, let's begin with uh, the rightmost guest. Uh, this is uh, Adolf Alex Jr. Uh, he's a very famous filmmaker, of course, a graduate of Pamantasa na Dunso ng Maynila, a uh, MASCOM graduate, and uh, multi-awarded, no? internationally awarded, na nationally recognized filmmaker. Uh, uh, they will all get the chance to int introduce themselves, actually. So mm -hmm. that's just a brief introduction for now. Mm -hmm. uh, and to my right is, of course, the director yes. of the UP Film Institute <laughs> and a professor of film in uh, the College of Mascom of UP Diliman. And of course, and also an awarded filmmaker. Um, uh, you may be familiar with the latest work uh, on Nick Joaquin, mm -hmm. a biopic on Nick Joaquin. This is Sari Delena mm -hmm. from a very famous uh, artistic clan. Uh, we had her sister Kiri as a guest in a, a previous episode. And beside her is uh, uh, the foremost chronicler of Quezon life no, in <laughs> film, uh, Lemuel Lorca, who's a graduate of San Sebastian College in Manila, grew up in Quezon and played volleyball uh, in his youth and will be soon doing a sports film. No? And he will talk about his project as well. So probably now it's time to, to allow them to introduce themselves. The first question has to do with Sort of just a description of your personal journey into this art form. No? What drew you to filmmaking? And uh, what, what was that journey like? So, saan, saan kayo nagsimula? Paano kayo naging napasok sa pelikula? Uh, um, Naalala ko po kasi pag dati, when I was younger, kapag hapon, pinapalabas yung mga lumang, lumang pelikula, di ba? Pag sa tangtanghali. So, minsan nakikita ko siya. Tapos sabi ko parang, I was just amazed at how they were able to do some of the horror or the mm -hmm. fantasy, fantastic films during that time. So, I got interested with that. Tapos when I was in college, um, I took up mass communication, but malapit lang po kasi yung PLM sa CCP. So oh. in between breaks, I would watch old, old Filipino films. So that's, uh -huh. what, that's where I, get, I got my orientation to, to Filipino cinema. But formally, uh, I took a workshop po under the Film Development Count, uh, uh -oh. then foundation pa siya of the Philippines under Nestor Torre. And then that's where I started. Uh, the script, I wrote their mm -hmm. one first prize in the contest and kinuha po nila Tita Mids, ginawa uh, nilang pelikula. So that's where it, I started as a writer. But as a director, uh, I joined Cinemalaya po in uh, tw 2006, oh, and second right. edition for Don Sol. That's my first film yeah. po. And then from then that's on... That's Don Sol, right? Yes po. Oh. And then from then on, I did mostly films and now I'm also doing uh, so you're TV. on the tour, you do the both scripts and you do uh, not up, not necessarily po. For some scripts na medyo uh, I think some people can write it better than me in terms of experience and knowledge. Sila po yung pinagsusulat ko. But for some films na I think I have a personal affinity with, ako po yung nagsusulat. So nakakailang pelikula ka na ngayon? Uh, ngayon po, I think uh, I finished mga 30, 30? features. <laughs> Talaga, wow. Very From 2006, yes. Ah, yes. Talaga naman. Now, it's Sari. Yes, okay. Um, okay, okay na. So, um, I came from, actually, I come from a family of visual artists. Oh. So, I would, uh, you know, give tribute to my parents yes. for exposing me and my sisters to mm. watching a lot of uh, films when we were, you know, growing up. My parents, uh, a painter and a sculptor. That's Danny Delena. Yeah, um, they made us watch all these silent films, no? Mm -hmm. Charlie Chaplin comedies, yes. Fellini, Kurosawa yes. films, and uh, of course Fantasia, mga Disney, and oh. and some Tagalog classics on television. So um, that's where I first fell in love with uh, cinema. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since then. Um, 
Yeah, I decided to formally take up uh, film studies here sa UP Diliman oh. and uh, also obtain my MFA film in the New York University. NYU. Oh. Yes. So a lot of extensive formal training in filmmaking. Yeah, I also took a workshop sa Mall Fun Film Institute mm -hmm. where um, I was exposed to experimental cinema mm -hmm. So I, I would say my early films were mostly short experimental works. Mm -hmm. um, I was exploring, you know, uh, film language. Yes. Um, later on, na, na develop yung um, love ko for social, uh, social political, historical <laughs> themes. Only recently. How many full-length films have you? Made? I've done seven documentary films now, uh, mostly mm -hmm. full-length, and siguro mga fifteen total, na ano, including the short films. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Siguro tingnan din natin yung background naman ni Lem. Yes, yeah. Ayun, I, well I started noong 2005 sa TV po muna, sa so isang travel show. Uh, But did you get training in college in film? No, I graduated kasi marketing yung course ko. Pero um, sinubukan ko ano, no, a workshop came after five years working for TV. Tapos um, sobrang clickish kasi ng industry. So there's no way for me na makapasok ng sa industry uh, sa tingin ko. So sabi ko, uh, para nakalimutan na yung pangarap to work sa television o sa pelikula. So ano nangyari, uh, when I was given the opportunity to write for a travel show, um, I, I took advantage na pinagbinigay nila sa akin yung pagsulat ng script. And then at the time, walang director. So sabi ko, might as well give it to me na rin. Ayaw pang ibigay ng producer, but she gave it to me anyway. So, doon na nag-start ng 2005. And not until 2009, na nag-workshop din ako sa Mawal Fund, mm -hmm. doon na nag-start yung, yung ano formal. Na, formal education sa paggawa ng pelikula. Pero nung maliit pa ako, parati kaming nanonood kasi ng mga drama sa TV. Mm -hmm. So, what happened? After, after mapanood yung drama sa TV, papagawa ko sa mga ate ko yung mga drama na panood namin. <laughs> si stage namin yung sa kama na oh, oh, sa kwarto mm -hmm. tapos sa school ganun ganun din. So the love for 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 films and mga palabas sa television it goes way back. Tumali pa ako. Started really early. All right, so maybe we can turn to a more contemporary issue, right? Which affects all of us and all filmmakers in particular. Uh, this distinction between independent and mainstream cinema in the Philippines. I'm wondering if they can share their thoughts on, on that distinction, whether they think the distinction is is real or whether, whether the lines are actually blurred between these two uh, realms. Uh, we we'll begin with Adolf again. Uh, I think by definition, I mean, by definition, kasi diba, when you say it's an independent film, it's just produced outside of the studio. So lexically, it, it still applies up to now that there, you have big studios that produce the regular fare, but, and then you, you have small studios or you have independent film companies that produce the, the independent films. But now, kasi, like, what happened, what, well, like what's happening outside of the Philippines, diba? some of the independent film gets distributed by mainstream studios when mm. they see that there's an there's a possibility or there's a market for a bigger audience. So that's when an independent film crosses over. That's fine, but I think you do have, like, uh, think of the recent success, Kita Kita, which actually, uh, from the inception, I think already had, uh, was gesturing towards mainstream. Yes, but they produced it first by themselves, by, an, by, by Spring Films, and then they, they, la they asked for distribution for Star Cinema or Viva, and then finally they landed a deal with, with Viva. So that's when, they got a bigger, a bigger distribution network, so that's why they got more theaters. But, but I think more than that, I think the more important thing to look at is that um, there's a blur now because you get mm. mainstream actors, actors also. Yes. You also get mainstream actors to work in independent films, which was seguro the, the case also outside of the Philippines. So I think it's, it, you blur the line uh, now, because you get actors from mainstream, you also get production people from the mainstream. You have mainstream people doing an independent film by producing themselves. So there's a blur now, but I think we should m focus more on what's what the content of the films rather than labeling it as mainstream or or yeah, independent. But then, uh, isn't that a, a bit of a problem? Because what is good about independent cinema is that it's independent. Yeah. Okay, so if you have now this infiltration of mainstream forces, which is really capital, isn't it? Uh, then maybe some of that independence goes out the window. Mal malaki, ba yung, mal malaki ba yung pagkakaiba ng 
ng, ng budget, alimbawa, sa mainstream, tsaka indie. At ano yung mga, ano yung mga factors na which you take into account kung, kung, kung isipin mo, ito, i-mainstream ko na lang ito, o, o ito, mm. indie na lang ito. What, what, what factors come into play dito? Well, yung, sa akin po kasi, para sa akin, you have to define first what kind of film are you going to make. Okay. Para kanini ito, para saan ito. Mm. So from the, concept, from the conception pa lang ng, ng paggawa mo ng pelikula, alam mo na kung paano mo ito ilalabas. Mm. Uh, is it going to be for uh, a bigger audience na mas komersyal? Mm. Or pang pang uh, independent pang festival sa dito sa Pilipinas or outside the country. So dun sa paggawa pa lang, alam mo na kung paano mo i-position yung pelikula mo. Uh, point of conceptualization is really a, mat- a question of formula, isn't it? Like That's mainstream right. oh. cinema, may formula. May mga genres and there are buttons you need to push, right? So if you want to have commercial success, basically push certain buttons. Like, kailangan may big name stars. Kailangan may ganitong kasing conflict. Kung rom-com yan, may mga conventions yan, di ba? But in Indy, wala dapat. No? Basically, the sky's the limit and you're free, yes. more or less, right? Yes. So I think that's the point of concept. But the, the question is, the blurring has to happen when you have forces. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, you know, like, uh, like Yolo you know. Pascual, sort mm-hmm. of producing the Indy film, right? Mm-hmm. And things like that. So it's, uh, my question is, is that a good thing for Indy, for the Indy movement? If you are, are allowing now these sort of influences to come in. Uh, medyo kasi naabutan ko pa yung panahon no, when you say independent film, no? mm. especially when I was doing workshop in Mowell Pond. When you talk about independent, I mean, uh, also I've not, I have not really done any mainstream mm. films. No? Um, so I, I would say that I, would, I have more experience doing independent films. Pero naabutan ko pa kasi yung panahon na ang philosophy when you, or definition of independent films are non-narrative, non-commercial. And these are the documentaries, the short films, mm-hmm. no? So, wala talaga siyang uh, any semblance of uh, profit or commercial elements, no? Pero I think that's, I would now say that that's more alternative talaga. Mm-hmm. No? Um, tsaka when you talk about independent films, talagang it is very much uh, um, separate. It's a counter cinema. Mm-hmm. It, it really goes opposition to the mainstream practices. Na ngayon, so are, are you saying, siya. Sari, there is now a mainstream independent and there is an independent independent? <laughs> <laughs> well, siyempre, I, I, w- I would say, like super, super independent. Ma- mahirap really kasi kung binary eh. Mahirap yung binary. Kailangan may spectrum talaga. And that also gives, uh, liberates everyone to choose where they feel they, they, they see themselves, no? Kasi mahirap kasi rin yung mga critics, sila rin yung nagbabak sa mm. mga filmmakers, yeah. no? And that's why it's important to articulate, nasaan ka sa spectrum na yan? For whom are you making the film, you know? Mm. And um, para sa akin, I don't really mind doing mainstream or independent as long as you're uh, doing best practices. Mm. I think yun ang pinaka-importante talaga eh, na kailangan rin pag-usapan. Okay. So, yeah. For so profit or for artistic expression. Uh, yeah. I, I think particularly for Adolf and for Lem, mm. they do work in, in television. No? So that's mainstream already, isn't it? Yes, yes. So uh, uh, how do you sort of reconcile that with your more independent uh, leads? Because uh, like, like when I look at the material, the impetus to do it supersedes whether it's an independent or a mainstream project. Like if you have you have a good story that you wanted to tell, pero siyempre you have a genre, you have a genre to it. Sometimes a mainstream studio, like for example, I did Batanes for GMA Films before. Um, they asked us kung if we have something. I told them we heard the story about a Taiwanese fisherman na, na trapped in Batanes. Uh, and then, of course, he, he met a, a local and they fell in love. So sabi ko, that can be a material that I wanted to do. So we pitched it to them, they liked it. So then it becomes a mainstream film because, because you have big actors in mm. it. But the, the way it was conceived, there were no interventions. There, walang nagsabi na, oh, we want this, we want that. Uh, so in the end, parang, kaya as a filmmaker, I would still always go to the best story and given the most limited and limited compromise. Because compromise is not always bad, naman. So mm. it, it means you just win whatever works for the both for both parties. So I did also a very independent film in Batanes called Kadin, which is about a young boy who just lost his goat, and he's, he's just searching in Batanes. So those are two different genres. Sabi ni Miss the other ones, 
very counter cinema because you just have no actors all all yeah. from Batanes. Mm. And then you have the other one who are who have big actors. Yes. So it's but at the end of it, it's just the story that you wanted to tell as a director for me. So mm. given the circumstance na magagawa siya, mm. be it a small film, if it doesn't need a uh, 14 million budget, why would you naman succumb to doing it a 14 million? We can do it 4 or 5 million. Natama yung yung circumstance. So it's just a matter of parang you have to do this story, so do it with the best sabi nga niya, with the best practice and with the best environment available, be it a mainstream or an independent mm. film. But you brought up the word compromise and it's a loaded word, isn't mm. it? Like, uh, so I'm wondering just how far are you willing to compromise? Uh, just in a, as a general question. You said you, comp you have to compromise because you have a good project, you have a good story. So just how far are you willing to, to go? May mga bata tayo filmmakers na nanonood sa programa na ito. They would be interested in knowing ano, anong klaseng kayong buhay yung sa maging director at anong klaseng mga kompromiso yung kailangan mong igawin no? when you're working now in the industry or kaya ay isang independent filmmaker. Ano yung mga thoughts nyo dun sa idea na ito? Meron nga bang kompromiso nangyayari? Uh, compromise. Of course, there's, there will always be compromises. Um, like, pag sabi nga ni Adolf kanina, uh, paggawa ng konsepto ng pelikula, di ba? So, gawin na lang kung, kung, kung saan posibleng pwede nating uh, maiproduce ito kung sa producer. Siyempre, kailangan natin compromise dun sa, uh, sa producer na makukuha natin. Um, let's say, uh, kapag pinipinitch mo to sa mas malaking kumpanya, they'll be looking for some specifics na kailangan mong ano. Sa akin naman, kung hindi naman ganun kalaki ang diferensya sa pagkakwento mo, kung hindi masyado maapektuhan yung narrative mo, okay lang naman sa akin. Parang nagkakatulungan lang kami ng producer eh. So, Saka collaborative art ng filmmaking. That's right. You Oo. always need to work with other people. And kung merong mas magandang idea na ibabato sa akin yung producer or kung sino mang kasama ko sa pelikula, then I'll take it. Iko-compromise ko yung original idea ko as long as hindi makakasira dun sa kabuuan, kukunin ko yung idea. Pero do you imagine na may hangganan yun? Hanggang saan yun? Ah, definitely. Kwento? Kasi meron ka namang kwento na gustong ikwento dito eh. So as much as um, gusto mong ma-produce tong pelikula mo pero sobrang kompromiso na yung gagawin mo, hindi ko gagawin. Siguro ituhog na natin yung sinabi ano, uh, if kayo ay interesado sa mga particular na kwento. Siguro we could have a round no, ng usapan. Ano yung mga kwento na interesado kayong i-impart through filmmaking? Yes. Ako recently, yung mga kwento ko naman is about my hometown uh, sa Mauban, sa amin sa Quezon Province. So, um, nakuha ko yung idea sa, sa kila, yan, kila Adolf, kila Mes. Nagsishoot sila sa probinsya. May mga kwento sila na ginagawa nila sa probinsya. So sabi ko, laki ako sa Mauban. I'm sure there are a lot of stories in Mauban. So when I started, ginawa ko muna yung Mauban ng Resiko, then followed by Water Lemon, the Ned's Project. So parang um, nasa bakuran ko lang yung kwento. Eh. I just need to keep my eyes open and my heart open and the stories are there. Makikita mo na siya doon. So, so, Sari, si Sari, napapansin ko yung mga, yung mga documentary mo tungkol sa mga political, historical, tsaka mga literary okay. figures. Alam na itong latest mo na uh, pelikula tungkol sa mga uh, figures from the underground. Ano? Yes, yes. Uh, what, what led you to these, to these uh, okay. characters? Yes, yeah. okay. uh, first of all, I, I like to talk about yung compromise. No? Oh, I've been quite fortunate, no? me and my film crew, my small crew, na when whenever we pitch some topics na medyo may political content, um, we were able to find producers such as Cine Filipino na yung panel nila, they were willing to take risks, no? Because the, the main topic was Joma Sisa, no? founder of the established Communist Party of the Philippines, and for it to be brought to commercial theaters, no? Ano naman sila, uh, kumangat naman sila. So I really appreciate those efforts. And because of that, that led me to pursue uh, this kind of, you know, um, genre. Kasi normally when you talk about uh, festivals, usually ano yan eh, uh, dominated yan ng narrative films, no? Mm -hmm. Pero for the first time sa Cine Filipino, we were first batch, hinalo nila yung documentary yeah, and yeah. the full-length narrative, mm -hmm. which was for me very integral, no? Yeah. And um, 
Kaya because of that support, na naengganyo kami na to continue this line to make creative documentary films. Mm -hmm. Na hindi lang siya, it's also very emotional and can be uh, accessible to the audience. Um, now is the right time to do more documentaries, political documentaries, no? especially for this new generation who will be voting when they in the you know pag voting age in 2020 by next election hopefully to inform them about our history so that's why um naka focus kami ngayon yeah, your projects have been historical eh? I think about it even the nikwakin biopic is history yes, yes kasi maraming material on martial law mm -hmm. na hindi lang tukol sa mga political prisoner it's also about literature culture Art, yeah. there's a lot of just a, a wealth of materials on history and culture na i think dapat i itawid natin sa kabataan ngayon mm. pero we 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 want to give them that choice and that op option na i mean, we're not dictating on them we want to open give them open ideas about what happened in the past meron ka pa bang dream project as far as documentaries go, na gusto mong gawin talaga? Um, yes, I'd like to do more documentaries on Filipino writers, mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Bolosan mm -hmm. and Jose Garcia Ayan. Villa, Ayan. which are important writers that um, influence many brilliant writers yes. nowadays, yes. and they are not recognized. Ito. And yeah. uh, especially Bulosan mm -hmm. touches on the immigrant stories yes. now, and it's still relevant today under the Trump administration. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a very interesting um, project. So I hope yeah. matuloy. Uh, natin yan. Yes, thank well, you. Just thinking of that sort of uh, cross fertilization across the, between the arts, no? you have literature and film. I'm thinking that what's very exciting about the filmmaking scene right now in the country is that um, it has already, I think, outpaced or outrun. Uh, the fictional production of many uh, young writers. Because no? the, mm. the films of our young filmmakers are covering areas of experience mm. that have not been covered by, by, by the literary uh, mm. practitioners, by the writers. No? So that's quite interesting. But I'm thinking that uh, at Sari's already done it with Nikokian, with Adolf and Lemuel, have you, have you thought of working on literary material? Are there like uh, favorite novels, Filipino novels or stories that you've read that you think might be lend themselves well to a filmic treatment? Um, actually, uh, actually I, I, the yung Filipino literature and I I was thinking like if you have a budget, like you can do Lam Ang, for example, mm -hmm. which is a very rich. When I was watching mga debate, currently they have this crap of mga films, epic films, and I was thinking mm -hmm. if. If if someone can can do lam ang right, it's a, it it can That's give true. a run for for other product. I mean for Hollywood productions the UP because. The press is now uh, publishing the complete epics of the Panay Bukid non. Yeah, so sabi right? ko that That's would be interesting books. and also yung even small stories like short stories ay yung like yung ang kalupi ni Benjamin Pascual I, I always remember and I always like that story so and then um, also yung mga remember one of our best films is uh, Manila Manila sa Kukunan yes which is also a novel I was also thinking a a, I was also thinking then of doing parang a modern version of Noli or El Fili now the character is an OFW he goes back to to yeah, the Philippines oh, diba yeah. so I think that's always a rich source of inspiration pero syempre you have to think of the right like the right time to be able to to pull it off and do you, do you think in terms of a theme like because you know more or less uh, the way you describe your filmmaking experience is like solitary do you, let's when a, when an idea or a story comes to you have you ever thought of like mm. thinking of a, of doing it as part of a team um, and there are people you already like to work with um, Hindi naman. It's not necessarily. It's not necessarily that I'm looking for certain themes, but I'm interested in characters. Like for example, uh, team as in grupo. Like ah, team. team. Uh, like for a team, yes, I work regularly with 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 my my staff. Because, diba, if you like, if it's a a production team that you regularly work with, ibig sabihin parang you're like a family na rin. So you you go to the set always. Do you have a and, favorite scriptwriter? Uh, I work with some some scriptwriters, depending on the the theme and also the subject matter. Because, diba, mm -hmm. sometimes it would also take like I for myself cannot try it, um, like Death March. I did a film called Death March. Yeah, See, si yeah. Roddy Vera wrote the script. Because I think sabi ko, I don't have enough. <laughs> uh, I read, I know, I read books about the death march, but of course, Rodi has the the capacity to be able to to meet all those things na pinag-usapan. So, 
Uh, and si Jerry Gracia also, for example, wrote, he wrote a short story. I did a film called Isda, which is based ah, in yeah, Dai so. Badi Dai. That yeah. na he was a godmother to a, to a fish. So, yun. Uh, so, it works differently. So, uh, I tend to, to work with people I worked with before kasi nga, yeah. you know the, 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 the level of work that they can do and also yung, since it's an independent film and you know, you have a very strenuous shooting days, diba? it's good to work with people you know. So, it, parang it's a, it becomes a family also. Yes. Well, uh, the question on using literary material, for example, and then the idea of working with with, with the, same, the team. same set of people, yeah. Well, I've worked with uh, Eros Atalia with uh, Into Shokoy na Kalya Marido. That was a short film na nanalos na first prize sa, sa Palangka. Was, was the writer um, on the set revising um, the dialogue and things like si that? Si Jerry kasi nag, <laughs> nag-translate na sa screenplay. So mm-hmm. Jerry and Eros was there. Okay. Uh, they were all the, there all the time. Nag-shoot kami ni Into Shokoy. And then um, there's this new book ni Eros na nag-uusap kami na baka gawin din namin yung yeah. it's not that complicated. Um, pero I'm really interested dun sa ano, dun sa kwento namin sa Mauban. We have this local hero called Gatuban. Ah. So I'm really interested kasi um, nakasulat Para na yung mga... Parang folk hero ninyo. Yes. Meron, meron ng mga fact sheets about him. So I'm interested. So given the right time at magkaroon ng tamang producer na makapagbigay sa amin ng kailangan budget para may sagawa yung isang epic na kwento tapos ano pa siya um, nangyari pa siya nung 1400 so medyo malaking pera yung kailangan so oh, naghihintay pa kami ng tamang man. panahon for that and then going back to the other question na do I love to work with the same team yes I do kasi um, I love these people. Uh, I trust them and they trust me also. And uh, pare-pareho na kami ng goal sa isang project. Sa, um, kakilala namin yung galaw ng isa't isa. Kasi importante na with um, dun sa mga projects namin, mga independent projects, we're only given like 8 shooting days or 15 max. Sobrang igsi ng panahon na yun. So kailangan kilala na namin yung galaw ng isa't isa. Mas nakakatulong na kaibigan ko rin sila. Yeah, but Sari brought it up, no? Meron na siyang crew can I, that you work with a lot. And then the material, the literary material you want to yeah. work on. Maybe I can add on that. My first two short films were a collaboration with my idol poets, feminist writers, oh. Marjorie Evasco yeah, March, and Lilia yeah. Kindosa Santiago. Talagang, I would do, ay, parang I really enjoyed working with them mm. no, on my short films. And um, it's also important for me to work with uh, with the writers who also went through difficult, ano, yung, yung sample, yung Sagarila is a poet, no? It's mm-hmm. really about you. Masiso. Pero my co-writer was Erickson Acosta. He was a political mm-hmm. detainee. In yes, fact, yes. when he co-wrote the script, he was still in detention. He was mm-hmm. not released yet. So, grabe yung, ano. And then for Daling Nick naman is to work with the young writer, Chris Lacaba, whose father is Jose F. Lacaba. Mm-hmm. And to write the scripts on the, about his father's experience during martial law was very important. No? Um, and then, um, yeah, I think that that's a very vital part. Eh, yung you are not just working with people na, uh, na kajay mo, but really who will really contribute Share greatly. Share your vision also. Oo mm-hmm. eh, kasi yung mer- 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 madadagdag na hindi mo nakikita eh. So, that's mm-hmm. why... Um, uh, speaking of idols and, and influences, Doon sa pag-develop ninyo at pag-aaral bilang mga director, sino, sino, sino yung mga figures sino na, na tiningalaan ninyo? <laughs> whether mga local na director sila o, o yung mga classic na sina Bunuel o yung mga ganyang-ganyang classic Kasulini. director. O, uh, at patuli pa rin ba itong pag-aaral ninyo ng, ng trabaho ng ibang tao sa ibang lugar? Uh, actually, madami po eh. But, but mm-hmm. I always remember yung si Vittorio De Sica. Because oh. I, I really yeah. love Bicycle Thief. Oh. Uh, oh. The, the simplicity of the story. Kahit sabi ko nga, doon ako naniwala na, I mean, walang amount of effects can tantamount to, oh. to the emotions that can bring a simple film. So, oh. every time na nagmagawa ako ng pelikula, naisip ko yung, yung ganun kasimpleng pelikula. Tapos, Sempre po si Mike De Leon, oh. si Lino Broca, at saka oh. si Ishmael Bernard. Gustong-gusto ko po yung nunal sa tubig. Oh. Hanggang oh. ngayon, sabi ko, pag pinapapanood ko siya, say ko, ibang klase yung, yung kwento na sabi nila, walang nangyayari. Oh. Pero kahit walang nangyayari, you felt na yung cycle ng buhay ay eh, eh ganun lang. Oh. Sa, sa labas naman po, siguro, uh, na, uh, yung gustong-gusto ko yung 
yung Dardine Brothers, si Luke tsaka si John Dardine. Yung ganun din. Mm. More on, mas gusto ko po kasi mga mas, siguro mas realistic yung, oh. yung treatments. Pero natutuwa din ako like si Guillermo del Toro yung recently. Oh. Uh, gusto, gusto ko po yung Pan's Labyrinth. Yes. Kung paano na pag-mix yung mm. fairy tale and and with, with social yeah. and historical elements na tapos yung huli niyang pelikula ngayon, yung Shape of Water na, na, na napanood ko sa ako. Ang, I, I marvel at how they, they balance it. So, yun. Pero marami po kasi, di ba? Kasi ako, I always look for the story. So, kung ano yung mas nakaka... Parang kung saan ako magre-react na story, yun yung mas gusto kong gawin. Oo. Yeah. I can ask sa uh, Lemuel, sino uh, ang mga... Well, I, I really look up to... Um, yung mga kasama ko sa trabaho ngayon, eh, like Anjali Bayani, you get inspired by her. Uh, meron ka ba isip na kwento bigla and then you will think of her all of a sudden na mm-hmm. kaya to ni Anjali. Na Perfect na si Anjali dito. So, um, uh, yung mga... Did you think na- of her right away for Ned's project? What's that? Ned's project. Um, Was she the first actress? Dalawa silang naisip namin. First is Isa Siguera. Uh, hindi pwede si Isa nung panahon na yon. So, sabi ko, Anjali, and ayaw pang gawin ni Anjali nung una, natatakot siyang gawin yung Ned's project but she did it eventually and sobrang swerte namin na ginawa sobrang ni Anjali. Sobrang swerte, yeah, the best. Oh. So, dun lang naman nakukuha yung mga ano eh. Kasi, um, no, but among, let's say, your contemporary filmmakers na Contemporary uh, filmmakers? Yung mga, uh, yung mga pinapanood mo? Si like, Adolf ba pinapanood uh, mo? Oh, no, pinapanood <laughs> ko naman sila lahat. Lahat, well, kami-kami lang naman nagkikita sa mga festivals. <laughs> Uh, kung hindi lang audience namin. Pero uh, sana nga, mas dumami pa yung audience sa mga festivals. Pero, I'm very happy to see you watching indie films yourself sa Trinoma, no? Pag nag-choose ano sila. Lagi naman. Kasi kami-kami <laughs> lang magsusuportahan eh. Uh, so, sino pang susuporta sa amin kundi kami-kami rin lang naman. So, parang pag nanonood ka, um, I don't need to go back to the 80s or the 70s. Like yung mga kakontemporary namin ng mga filmmakers ngayon. Uh, you get inspiration from them. Like si Sigrid. Mm, Bernardo, yes, nakita-kita, di ba? Nakaka-inspire yung nangyari rin sa kanya. Sobra. From a very small film na biglang pinakamalaking independent film na ngayon yeah. na sa box office. So, things like that. Yung nakakatuwa na kaibigan namin yung mga idol namin sa isa't isa. Yes. Ikaw, sa, ikaw Sari, kasi in, in your particular case, nag, nag-MFA ka sa, sa NYU. Ano? Siya, eh. So, talagang ibang klaseng exposure yan. Yes. Did that help you a lot in in in, in crafting your, your i mean your, your filmmaking afterwards malaki ba pinagbago dahil nakapag-aral ka sa ganyang mga sentro ng, ng filmmaking yes um it's a wonderful experience um learning under you know spike lee was my professor oh, he was oh, also wow. my thesis advisor oh, wow. and um also the the writer of blade runner no hampton puncher was my screenwriting mm-hmm. teacher mm-hmm. so may kita ninyo medyo iba yung outline structure and mm. their their uh, script writing method was quite oh. different from um my studies here no oh. So it it really enriched my learning, mm. and uh, when I went back, she ni share ko talaga siya sa students ko. Oh. Mm. Um, but it it's also more independent. Uh, yeah. Parehong yung teaching ng NYU no, not really for oh. Hollywood. Not so I appreciate yeah. ko rin yung oh. philosophy ng NYU Film Studies ko, especially MFA. Sa gusto ko rin yung inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, during my film studies, uh, I was very much inspired by Maya Deren's experimental works, which mm. uh, dealt with dream logic and all that. And for independent philosophy, it's uh, Kidla Tahimik. Mm-hmm. No? Mm-hmm. I really love how he made his films, very personal filmmaking. Oh. And then, of course, Nick Joaquin naman also somehow influenced my, the way I wrote my scripts. <laughs> Nick Joaquin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a little strange. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, of course, we have him, uh, Bernal and Broca. Yes. Well, you brought up the international connection. You were trained internationally, no? Uh, but the 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 perception or maybe the reception of Philippine films in the international scene, we seem to be in a niche, which is parang, well, I call it miserablism, no? but it has also been called pornography, uh, poverty, por- porn. poverty porn. Uh, maybe I'd like uh, you guys to share your thoughts on that. Uh, is it a good or a bad thing that we seem to be internationally known to be, uh, our cinema seems to be specializing uh, on that subject of poverty? And when, of course, it's our reality, but it's not our only reality uh, on one hand. And I think uh, poverty porn is not just a, it's not, it's a term that pertains 
not so much to the topic being about the poor, but it's a way you treat the topic. It's a perspective or it's an approach to the topic. So maybe uh, you can share your thoughts on that. If do you think you've already done films that are that are that can be accused of being uh, an example of poverty porn? Uh, or I think. Well, I think pen the penchant of, of foreign programmers, kasi, di ba? like in any like in any festival. Fi festival or in any film culture or in any country that does films, Siyempre, they have their own their own perspectives of what we types can of call films. It stereotypes, eh? Yeah, they have they have, they have stereotypes of what type of what types of films di ba? they wanted to bring to to a festival. Of course, they're always curious of of the Filipino poverty experience because when they see Smoky Mountain, for example, or they see people in the streets, it it, it immediately attracts them. But what during like in the in recent years, I think uh, festivals have also been more open to films that are not only. Uh, uh, poverty porn, but also they explore certain areas in cinemas. Like, for example, the, the Rotterdam Film Festival in, in the Netherlands has always been exposing uh, a lot of films, alternative Filipino films, that, that doesn't only deal with, with poverty, diba? like si John Torres, for example, who mm -hmm. does films. That's true. Uh, and also but si that's Raya the exception, because eh? yeah, so you have the Dante Mendoza films, Kinata, yung mga yan, yung, the ones that become acclaimed, diba? mm. maybe the other, other exception would be Love. Yeah, like Love Diaz, love for example. Love is working not so much on the topic of poverty, but on the topic of history and allegory. No, that's a different kind of... Cinema I think it's it's also it has something to do then also with the of course that that's a prejudice of course like for example the like the Iranian films would always be about mm. about this young the children and yeah. like the melodramas that they would do always but now you have you have see si Asghar who did yeah, a separation and, and who's who's totally changing the way you see yes, yes. Iranian cinema so also even like, Thai cinema and that like Thai rin, cinema bago, bago like rin, before yeah. it's it, well, you have Sila Penek and Sila, mm -hmm. now you have Api Chatpong who tries to change everything. So, so like in like what you said, Sila Diaz and a lot of young, a lot of young filmmakers are also trying to change the the way how Filip foreign festivals look at Filipino films. But that's still a, a niche that they try to look at. But more than that, Siguro, that's just a backdrop. Mm -hmm. La, but it has to be the story that ha that happens mm -hmm. yeah. in the film more than the poverty. But that's always, I know. It's personally because they're the ones choosing the film. We cannot yeah. dictate. We can do, you, do you think Lino Brock has to blame uh, to a large no. extent no. for that? Because no, he, no, no. Oh, uh, the neorealist films of Lino Brock no. were no, I don't special, think so. quite, uh, quite focused on urban poverty in particular. No, right, because like, you should also blame the Sika and Sila, oh. ano, because during the time they do post war films, diba na everybody's going yeah, to the yeah, festivals. Yeah. So, I think it's, an, ano, it's a special experience. I siguro baka nakarelate lang sila during that time with the characters. And of course, being a third world country, mm. it's always... No, it, I think that, the, that, that, that the, the charm of Lino Broca's films, which is, as, is still more or less an influence now on filmmakers, is that you work on the topic, not just of poverty, but on the topic of the moral dissonance of the poor. Who, you know, the complexity of that life. Basically, you have, let's say, uh, thinking of Maximo Oliveros, no? Uh, you know, a family of snatchers, but they're all devoted to each other and they love each other. So meaning it's a complexity of that, the moral situation of the poor who have to survive and, and in doing so have to be immoral, but they're actually pretty moral within that world. So that kind of... Yeah, exactly. So you mean you have characters working in, on a political milieu that yeah. happens just to be in, in a poor family. But more than that, what resonates is the characters. So the ba yes. it's just a, a background. Like yung ginawa kong film ngayon, the last film I did, it's called Madilimang Gabi. It's about the, the drug war in the Philippines. But they're, they're poor. But you, you see the characters are gray characters. So I think... Mm. That's why I was also interested in doing that because the pushers are not really diba, white. I mean, they're, they're clear pe they're, na may they're people. Na tao na walang ginagawang masama, but they become victims to it. So now you have yung moral pendulum katulad ng sinasabi mo. So mas, mas I, we, interesting. Isa pang, isa pang, uh, speaking of Broca, no? isa pang malaking pagkakaiba na nakita ko uh, between Broca and his time and sa ngayon, yung, yung kay Lino kasi yung plots niya very linear. Diretso lang talaga. Mm -hmm. Pero ngayon, hindi na. No? Nagsasanga-sanga, minsan... The film language is oh, different already. Ibang-ibang iba na. What, what happened to, to, uh, to storytelling? In, mm. Digital, sa digital, sa digital uh, technology. That changed uh, a lot. Let, let's, let's hear from, 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 from the yeah. filmmakers. And from the teacher. Yes. Well, let me talk. Uh, 
yung poverty porn issue muna why oh. I think Lino Broca transcends that no oh. that stereotype uh, because he is not merely a filmmaker he is really uh, an advocate an activist he mm. was part of that community and he went beyond um, making a film about you know it's not just backdrop no mm. he really kasi ang question dyan, who gains from making these films mm. using poverty kasi of course now we have become a niche na parang we have this morbid especially festivals have this morbid fascination mm. with suffering yes. third world country now so ang question is ano ba talaga yung intention ng filmmaker you know who will gain is it going to be advance his career bring him fame mm. you know and at the same time you will see a big disconnect na there is against the filmmaker side mm. but there is no improvement sa stories or sa life ng mga mm. subjects na so that's why I think Lino Broca is uh, a genuine storyteller for, you know, he can speak on their behalf. Mm. Um, nakita naman natin sa practice niya. Mm. And it was not just a business strategy of most filmmakers mm. who just want to go to, you know, they stumble upon a story on the internet and, oh, kawawa naman sila, let me make a film about this now. Pero they are actually removed from that community. Mm. So sa akin, um, you will not be accused of doing poverty porn films. Mm. If you are, if you uh, use the immersive the approach, yeah. if there is an immersive approach and you bring integrity to these people mm -hmm. after you make that film, my continuing uh, relationship. If you humanize the poor. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Th that is why I think I'm I'm favoring the documentary mm. films on uh, on poverty because uh, iba yung relationship ng documentary filmmaker mm. sa kanila sa community. It is, you know, long-lasting, mm. my uh, longitudinal relationship. So that's why I, I, I'm not surprised that a lot of Filipino filmmakers are accused of, you know, mm. uh, blatant uh, exploitation. Because in some ways, poverty films are exploitation. It's mm. an exploitation of the, uh, the situation of our, you know, the mass. Mm. Kaya it's, it's, it's very tricky. So, pag yung sa, ma, I guess you get you only get accused of uh, doing poverty porn. Kapag um, pag hindi nagiging personal sa yung filmmaking, kasi pag kunyari, um, may mamimit kang story, iimbestigahan mo, and then you get curious about what 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 is it about. And then pag nakita mo na siya, sobrang superficial pala na nakikita mo na sa hindi mo pa surface no, lang surface lang yung nakikita mo. So. Kapag when you do uh, a deeper investigation, gumawa ka na ng fact sheets mo, uh, nag-immerse ka na dun sa character, so nag-iiba yung perspektibo, hindi mo lang gustong ikwento yung kanilang kahirapan, nagiging totoong tao sila. Um, sa akin kasi, pag gumagawa ng peligala, importante na you dive into the characters, you become the characters, uh, nagiging nanay mo yung mga characters, so nagkakaroon ng dignidad yung pagkatao nila. So hindi lang basta ini-expose mo yung kahirapan, bakit sila masama, nagiging tao sila. So I guess that's the difference between kumuha ka lang ng isang kwento about kahirapan o nag-immerse ka totally at naging ikaw yung character, then nasasabi mo with justice and with integrity. Kung well, just to be fair, I brought up the the, the concept of poverty porn uh, because I know none of you is guilty of that. I've seen your works. No? You, you've, you've had uh, stories about the poor but they are never e exploitative because you humanize and the poor have dignity and they're complete round characters. No? Kasi naging iba-iba eh. Like nung panahon nila Lino Broca, ibang pakikipaglaban nung panahon na yun. Uh, nung 90s, early 2000s na rin ngayon. Ibang pakikipaglaban na namin mga filmmakers. So, meron kaming mga kanya-kanyang paniniwala at meron kaming kanya-kanyang uh, decision kung paano namin ikakwento, iaatakihin yung isang kwento kung, kung yung mga relevant na kwento sa ngayon. Yes. Now, we go, go back to the question on uh, on the filmic language and how now hindi na masyadong linear yung filmic language no, or yung, yung flow ng mga films natin. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Adolf? Uh, uh, your own films have uh, shown a variety of, of sort of like plot sort of arrangements, right? So uh, do, are you attracted to this non-linear manner? Uh, I think it always depends on the subject. Mm -hmm. Like how well, how will you use the the narrative to 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 support the film? Because they say that still content is king. So if because that, you still follow certain narrative structures to fit the story. Like for example, I did a film that uh, Sinulat ni Love Diaz, the Alamat ni China Dal. Uh, when he wrote yeah. it, 
when he wrote it, it's uh, linear. Tapos when we were shooting, sabi ko sa kanya parang, uh, baka pwede namin, since it's about an investigation, laruin, ang laruin yung structure na in a way na, because there's parang dalawang timelines. Uh, so sabi ko, paglaruan natin, why won't we tell it, we start from the present and then you you tell the story. So you have two narratives, one going forward, mm-hmm. one going forward, the other strand going backwards. Mm-hmm. So in, in, at the effect, ma, mas maha-highlight mo yung... Because any, any any narrative structure should serve the story first, not just to para guluhin yung audience or para masabi, oh, magaling siya magkwento kasi ni Rumble Rumble niya, mm-hmm. okay na siya, mahusay siya, di ba? Hindi siya. So it always serves the purpose of the story. The other film I did is yung Tambolista. It's about... Oh yes, a young right. boy na nag Well, it was important that you change the plot there because it's it uh, there is a payoff. Yes. yes. Yeah, so parang he likes to to play the drums. So drums is music, rhythm. So rhythm is sometimes uneven. So yung mga ganung take mm-hmm. kasi nga sometimes mas you also make the audience parang go into another territory na hindi sila familiar. But at the end of it, it's it's it becomes familiar to them because it it's always a story of a family pa rin naman. But so, yun. yung tambulista kasi the revelation is in the end eh. So, yes. okay lang that you kind of mess around with the plot a bit kasi in the end may pay off talaga siya. Ah. Yeah. I think I can say that uh, itong non-linear structure, mm. hindi na yung bago eh. Even mm. before the groundbreaking films of, you know, Kurosawa's Rashomon mm. and we have Orson Welles' uh, mm. Citizen Kane mm. mm. which really went against the three-act structure classical Hollywood, mm. you know, uh, um, storytelling, no? mm. so they would do multiple perspective, multiple flashbacks, mm. flash forward. So and you know that was at that time, uh, ano siya, um, groundbreaking siya. Mm. So ngayon yung mga bata, the young filmmakers are also exposed to um, doing more out of the box mm. um, storytelling, and we are we are encouraging them to do that, no? And because of also the liberating ang digital technology, mm. before kasi. When you talk about, you know, Sinele Nubroca, there's, you know, they really follow the chronological, straightforward narrative, mm. ano. Because also, because the celluloid dictated and yeah. limitations of the medium, <laughs> the celluloid. Pero may digital, uh-huh. you, can, you, you can do one Splice thing and one re-splice hour, and, and like yeah. Like and do multiple versions of it, no? Oh, and Love Diaz is actually still narrative pa rin siya, pero seven hours na. Yeah, no, no. Can, can we bring up Love Diaz later? We will talk about Love's kind of cinema later. No, no, no. Yes. We're, uh, we're out of time, actually. Oh, we're out of time. So, uh, oh, that's so awful. So I'm, I'm very sorry, but we've, we've had can, a... Ter- can we have ter- Lem's thoughts on that, that last uh, question on no, non-linear films? Non-linear. As long as nagbagi sa kwento mo, may kukwento mo ng tama yung mga kwento ng mga characters mo. Why not? Go ahead. Go for it. Uh, like si um, yung ginagawa ni Sir Bing Lau ngayon, yung mm. mga pag gumagawa siya ng uh, non-linear ng script ng script actually pag yung even sa Dukit yung dinirect niya mm. um, it's non-linear also so as long as bagay siya na ikukwento mo ng tama mm. yung kwento mo correct wala namang bawal sa pagawa ng pelikula Okay, yes. pwede ba natin uh, matanong niya ating mga panawin ngayon uh, for, uh, for some last words about uh, ano mga problema at prospects na nakikita ninyo para sa inyong trabaho bilang director sa pelikulang Pilipino. Uh, uh, can we start with you, uh, Sarah? Yes? Uh, or, uh, problems and or prospects? Of course, yung sustainability talaga. Mm-hmm. No? And for me, I have not done uh, studio films or commercial films, but I'm open to that. But no? right now, I'm very, very content doing documentary films. Mm-hmm. Pero sustainability, paying the bills and all yes. that, I think is a you know, it's a reality. Okay. So, which is, uh, would you, would you recommend having a day job yes, to I'm, filmmakers? I'm, I'm, I'm teaching at the same time. Um, would you lang UP allows oh. us to pursue our, um, you know, passions. Films. So, yes. I've, I've done, I've, I've done uh, at least five full length films while mm-hmm. I'm teaching, and mm-hmm. I really appreciate that given that opportunity. So, yun nga lang, no. Um, not for profit, yes. really for educational and um, yeah, it's it's uh, hoping that what are the prospects for documentary films in the country? Because that's uh, that's your passion, like more documentary okay, films. Okay, so that's why I was happy last year during the MMFF that mm. we included a good documentary film yes. which is late now, which was uh, um, Sunday Beauty Queen. Yes, so, yes. Oh, and oh. that was although it was it was uh, in terms of box office third, no, it was not. Oh. But for me, it did well. Oh, it did well. Yeah. And it was, 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 and it was
Oh. So, for me, uh, ang ganda nung nangyari na yun. Eh. That, that's a failed experiment. No? This year's yes. MMFF, it's back to formula films. So, eh, last words na tayo. I'm sorry. Ako <laughs> naman. Uh, marami eh. Maraming hindi lang siya pang isang oras na show yung problema. Hinakarap namin yun. Mm -hmm. Kung sakasakaling pag-uusapan natin yun. But sa akin, yung personal sa akin ngayon. Uh, siguro nung nag-start ako na gumawa ng pelikula, sabi ko, bibigyan ko yung sarili ko ng tatong taon. Mm -hmm. uh, Inano ko na, inasume ko na na hindi magiging uh, profitable or sustainable ka agad-agad sa akin. So, kaya kailangan mong, you need to do something on the side. Uh, kung kailangan mong gumawa ng ADP or mm. pursuing your passion. Gumawa ng uh, furniture. Gumawa ng furniture kay Gaya ko. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, magtrabaho sa television. Okay lang naman yun. Uh, mm. As long as um, nakatuto ko pa rin sa gusto mong mangyari. Huwag mm. mong bitawan yun. And just make sure na meron kong pabayad ng bills bago mong bitawan na lahat. Ayan. Yeah, very practical uh, advice. Uh, ganun din naman. Parang mahirap kasi to balance yung ano eh, what you love and what you need to do. So dahil doon, you, you, you just have to, to make certain points in between na uh, you, you still do what you want and at the same time, yun nga, meron kang uh, one that sustains your, your daily needs. So, pero more than that, importante rin ngayon siguro yung sa mga independent filmmakers yung, yung distribution channel for, mm. for, I mean, a distribution network for the films na ginagawa. Kasi nga, ngayon marami na talagang independent films yung ginagawa and you don't have a lot of distribution uh, options. So, baka yun, um, marami More na nagbubukas like FDCP has uh, a lo yes. uh, cinema local with which which and curates. More festivals are, are happening. Uh, hindi naman siguro more festivals, but also ano lang, uh, parang mas maraming concrete uh, distribution channels for independent films para mas maraming mas ma expose yung mga young, yung mas bata, mga younger generations dun sa iba't ibang klase ng pagkukwento at saka ng cinema. Kasi kung dami ng festivals, ang dami ng festivals ngayon. Um, which is also the strength ng nangyayari sa industry na yung mga batang director na gusto maging director, there are five different festivals now. Uh, may seed money na, meron ka ng built-in audience dyan, makakagawa ka ng pelikula mo. So, ang dali na ngayon, just come up with a good story, a good script, and then mapipili ka, and then makakagawa ka ng pelikula. Very generous naman yung mga yeah. film festivals na ito, and we're very thankful to them. Yeah, and it's very exciting because now there are all kinds of films being made. And mm -hmm. we didn't have the time to bring up Lab Diaz, but I just want to put in this uh, little word about that. It's that what he's doing is actually transgressive cinema. No? He's challenging the way we conflate the idea of cinema with entertainment. You're not supposed to be entertained entirely when you watch a film. So you actually, when you watch Love, you get irritated. And sometimes you get bored and you get sleepy and you get hungry, right? You, Experience all sorts of things because that's part of what cinema should also do, okay. not just to entertain. Uh, can I have a last word from Cecil? I think for a long, long time, ang tingin niya ng Pilipino public uh, yes. sa pelikula ay isang escape, no? Mm. As an entertainment. Pero nowadays, I think bubukas naman yung pinto na hindi ito simply lamang na escapism, mm. escapism, no. no? Even in curatorial work, ang um, video art is a major module para sa mga exhibitions and in fact may video art na as a visual uh, phenomena so i think yung pag appreciate natin sa filmmakers yeah. or yung broad definition ng paglikha ng mga images yun yung lingwahe talaga ng 21st century yes, it's the wave of the future no? it's not the, just the pure words the narrative but really how we it's mix and visual. merge yeah. yung hybridity ng images sa uh, everyday world Yes. And to make sense of it, I think yeah. you knew lesson. Uh, okay. Sari wants just a last word. All right. Uh, Pale, also to this year, 2017, we celebrate the 100 well, years here, of Philippine yes. cinema. You know, spanning 100 years of Philippine cinema, starting with Don Jose Rubense, no, mm -hmm. uh, who opened the first uh, all Filipino production studio called Malayan Studio. So Philippine cinema is very young, 100 years. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to. More well, the, the future okay. is bright with you guys. <laughs> okay, on, on, on that note, uh, kulang po talaga ang isang araw para wow. sa talakayan tungkol sa pelikulang Pilipino. Pinakamaganda pong magagawa natin ay tangkilikin natin ang pelikulang Pilipino, ano, uh, whether mainstream ito o, o indie. Uh, kaya po, maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga panauhin, sa aking mga co-hosts, tulad nga na sinabi ng yumao nating kaibigan si Dan Dinadres, na isang scriptwriter, uh -huh. 
Hanggang dito na lang po lamang at maraming salamat.